See, I would have thought you would have loved Buffy. There's feminist badasses, there's um, versatile different kinds of female characters, there's LGBTQ plus representation, there's wit, there's awesome dialogue, um, there's drama, and there's, there's a deep message to analyze. You really love Buffy, don't you? Yeah, I really do. <laughs>
she is a true classic. Imagine this. There are two characters, a man and a woman usually, in this heterocentric world of ours, and they meet each other and they hate each other from the get-go. Yeah, well, it sounds familiar. Well, obviously it does. That's like the formula to every single romantic comedy ever written. So, the man falls in love with the woman despite the first impression, the woman gets charmed by his whatever, and then there's a huge obstacle for their love. Eventually they solve the obstacle and after that the woman can't believe that the man could ever love her. There's a huge declaration of love and then they live happily ever after or oh, something. God, I hope so. What I'm saying is, I'm willing to bet that Jane Austen was one of the first or not even the first to ever use this formula of romance. What did you say? Well, I didn't say anything. Okay, where was I? Yeah, so she probably, anyway, created the form formula that nowadays brings millions of dollars to a lot of people in the world per year. She supports the arts and so on, so on. She is a true classic. Besides, it's sexist to disregard the books, books as girly books. All right, tell you what, I'll read Pride and Prejudice if you give the old man and the sea a try. I'll read The Old Man and the Sea if you reread Pride and Prejudice without any pride or prejudice and listen to a full album of Taylor Swift with, a, with an open mind. What? That's not fair. If I have to listen, then you'll have to listen too. But The Old Man and the Sea is a new one for me. You've already read PMP. Uh, my point? Exactly. Twice the torture. Hmm. You owe me an album of Leonard Cohen. He doesn't... That doesn't even count as singing. It's all in the lyrics. Then why didn't he stick to poetry? Ah. Oh. Alright, half an album. You listen to half an album and I'll listen to the deluxe version of 1989. Deal. Deal. What? Nothing, I was just thinking of how very unmelancholy and unescrutable you are. Uh, thanks? <laughs> You're welcome. Oh, uh, hey, by the way, can you, um, plug my blog? Do you have a blog? Yeah. How long have you had a blog? Um, it's something like just over a year now. Uh, Gilbert Blythe! Remind me, how long have we been friends for? Around six months. Then why do I not know that you have a blog? Well, it's been kind of my personal-ish until now. Okay, well, what is it called? Uh, it's the G-spot. The what now? The G-spot. It's kind of like my private corner of internet, you know? It's my spot. No, you did not. Of course I did. It makes perfect sense. That's a Charlie level joke. What joke? I don't see a joke here. I hate you. Uh, so does that mean you're not gonna plug my blog? You're gonna make me say, please visit the cheese pot on my channel. <laughs> yeah, sure. It's like I just said. It used to be my uh, private thingy, but uh, now I'm gonna open it up for business. <laughs> They go, what are you searching for? <laughs> yeah, well, after this video, they don't have to search no more. <laughs> Looking for the cheese pot? Don't worry, it's conveniently linked down below. You're done.